Hey guys, welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So what we're working on today, um, we made the uh, this front panel for this guard the other day, and then I had to get some more uh, strip sheared. So my buddy Marty helped me out on that. And uh, so what we're going to look at today is uh, how we form these strips. Uh, I don't have any rolls in the shop, so we're going to kind of use some old school techniques to uh, to form these curvatures in here, and then uh, get this joint fitted up for welding. Um, and then uh, you know we so we have two of these strips to form here. So it's all it's kind of done right now, but uh, so we're going to rewind, and uh, you guys will get all, to see all the steps uh, to making this guard happen. So uh, let me uh, get a screw in here. Snug that down, and uh, let's rewind and uh, let's go back and see how we did this. Okay, so um, we've got this all cut out now, and what we want to do is, um, my friend Marty sheared me some strips. Um, I need to uh, make the the curved side piece that will make this into a three-dimensional, uh, you know, cover. So. As you can see, we got a straight section, then we have to form it around this curve, and then there's a little bend here, and then it kind of ends here at this mark. So I marked this on the machine over there, uh, that's kind of the end of the guard. So we're just going to, you know, you could do this in a set of rolls, if you had a set of rolls. I don't have a set of rolls, um, although I don't think we need one uh, for, this particular, uh, for this particular operation, since we have a good template here. So we're just going to hand form this. And um, uh, I'll show you guys how to do that, and uh, uh, so we get a nice smooth curve in this, and it looks good. And then it'll get welded to this, and then that's kind of one side of the guard. And then the same thing will happen on the uh, on the opposite side. Okay, so let's do a little marking here, just to start with. Um, now I'm going to leave it a little proud here at the end, uh, just because. It's really easy to trim it back, but it's really hard to do anything with it if you uh, <laughs> come up short. So uh, let's do that. And then what I want to mark here is um, basically the start of the bend here. So I got, you know, three eighths of an inch there, you know, maybe 10 millimeters. So I'm going to start bending here. Okay. And it'll come around. So we're, we're going to match it to this, so um, um, I don't have to mark the tail end, I just want to mark the, uh, mark the beginning uh, like that. Okay, so let's go set up on the, uh, we're going to do this in the vise with, uh, with, a, with a tube, and uh, let's, go, uh, let's go do that. Okay, so actually, you know, uh, when I, after I turned the camera off, I kind of changed my mind how I'm going to form this. So, but I wanted to show you guys uh, a couple of things with, with hand forming. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put a, something big, <clears throat> big and round in here, like that. And uh, when you put something like this in the vise, the best is if it's resting on the bottom and then the two jaws are grabbing it. So it's kind of like a pipe wrench. You have uh, um, three-point contact, okay? All right, um, so the reason I changed my mind is because we're actually, we're actually starting our bend well back here from the edge. It's different if you're, if you're starting your bend right on the end of the strip, okay? So there's a better way to handle this, this type of situation, and I'm going to show you that too. But when you, uh, I have another strip here, same material. So when you want to start forming a strip, okay, um, let's just say this is our radius here, because it is. Um, this is slightly smaller than that, okay? And uh, the reason for that is that there's spring back. Um, so uh, if I started with a form or a, a mandrel like this that was the same size as this, it would end up too big. And once it's formed, it's a little harder to work with than it is to uh, um, if it's a little too small. So you, Generally, if you're a little too small, it's pretty easy to handle, and if you're a little bit too big, it's just a little more difficult to work with. But uh, the way I like to form a strip like this is uh, uh, you want to be straight with the, uh, 
with the axis here, you don't want to be off like that. So you want to concentrate that you're holding it, that you're holding it perpendicular to the axis here. And the the thing you got to watch out for is uh, make sure. Uh, oh yeah, I'm in the I'm in the frame nicely there. Um, is getting greedy. We don't want to start like that. We want to start um, real close to the end, and our blows are are all going to be right along this area here. It's real tempting to hit it out here, right? And get a lot of bend. But really what you want to do is work it in small increments and keep your, your hammer blows close to the mandrel, okay? So there's this point that your tangent there that's touching, but you want to be slightly ahead of that, but not so far that this thing bends up and you get a, a, a large belly in the curve and it's not really a radius, it's, a, it's more elliptical and it doesn't, it doesn't match. So let's do a little bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Um, so I'm just going to leave a little bit hanging off like that and I'm going to start the bend. Okay, and you can see that it's starting real nicely there. Okay, and now I'm going to scooch it forward just a little bit. Okay, and I'm increasing. So I'm directing my blows across this, you know, across this face. I want to work this whole face. I don't want to just hit it in one place. I want it kind of an even, uh, an even bend here. And my thing's are already moving here. Let's back it up a little bit, get a little more counterweight on it. All right. So, you know, all I really need is that much. But, uh, so let's do a little more. This is a soft hammer. This is kind of my favorite forming hammer. It's light enough that you can swing it, um, but most of, your, most of your energy goes in into this. And here's the key, is there's a little bit of rebound so that you don't have to work as hard. If you use a dead blow, the hammer just stops and you have to lift it. And if you're using a hammer a lot, dead blows are very, very tiring. Uh, so you, you want that little bit of that little bit of spring back. Ask any blacksmith, they'll tell you it, it saves them tons of work. So anyway, let's do a little more. Let's get a little more curve in this and then we'll try it on our template there. can see that's actually it looks like it's going to come out a little bit small as I work that around okay um, which is okay because it's really easy to open up but it's harder to harder to close down more once you have a uh, and you can see inside it's nice and smooth in there my hammer's not leaving any marks it's just what you want it looks like it was rolled right and then you look at this edge too to see if you're you got any little wavies in it, uh, and that way you know that you're you're doing enough work back and forth. Anyway, that's kind of the, the kind of the way you do that, and uh, you can curl this around as far as you want. Um, we're not going to uh, do it this way. We're going to show you a second way. So let's go do that. Okay, so we're going to form our strip over here. We're going to use our same tube that we were just showing here. But what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use a table as part of our forming thing and what I'm going to do is put some shims under here and these are just slightly thicker than the material thickness that, uh, that we're working with and I'm putting it on the corner of the table here and you'll see why in a second okay uh, because I can get the clamps I can get the clamps in here really easily so what we're going to do is clamp that down like that nice nice and hard same thing over here, we're going to clamp it right on the shim, okay, like that, nice, nice and tight. So now what I have, uh, now this piece is kind of sleek here, but I got a little space under there and I can use that, in fact, let's, uh, let's do a little bit with this one here and I can pull up and I can scooch it in and do incremental incremental bends, okay, and get a nice radius there. So let's get our strip, and um, what we'll do is I'm going to work it from this side 
So maybe I'll, I'll bring the camera around over here so you guys can see it. And uh, boy, that's loud. Uh, and that's how we're going to form that strip. So. Okay. So here's our strip, and um, there's our little starting mark right there. And so what I want to do is shove this underneath, but I want to know where the center of this is when I shove it under there. So I'm just going to set it on top initially and mark the uh, and mark where the diameter of the tube comes. So I just sight down vertically, and I can see right where that uh, right where that starts. Okay. So basically, what we're going to do is just kind of keep it oops, straight with the world there, and we're just going to come up. I'm going to give it a little bend, scoot it in, a little bend, scoot it in. So it's kind of like a, a manual uh, press brake, sort of, where we're bumping this along. But I get really good leverage and I can locate the, uh, the bend really well. And you can see I'm not scooching it in very far. And here's, uh, you know, where you have a, a little bit of extra strip is really handy. If it gets really short, it kind of gets hard to bend. So I'm looking for almost 180 here. See that? That's a nice smooth bend. Nothing weird on the outside. Let's uh, change the camera around and see how it fits our uh, um, our guard section. Okay. What we got there? Well, that's uh, pretty darn good. And you can. See you can see I'm long over here, but that's okay. I don't know. I think that's. Uh, I keep forgetting. I gotta put it here. Do a little, little hand massage there. All right. Well, that is uh, that is certainly workable there. From a, from a fabrication standpoint. So now what I want to do is I want to, I want to get this. Uh, so what we got to do is this is kind of free floating now is we want to kind of lock it in and, uh, and start working it from a, from a specific point here. Um, but we got to do this. We got to get this little weep, that little bit there. So uh, actually we'll, we'll, we'll bend that in the, in the break over there. We'll just give that a little kick once we uh, Kind of get this where we want it, and honestly, we could we could start tacking this and get get it partially welded, and then go over to the brake and and make that little bend, and then trim it off too. We could do it that way if we wanted to. So okay, so you can see that's pretty close. So it was a good guess on the uh, the spring back there, and you know that's kind of an experience thing. Each material kind of behaves differently, so you have to uh, you have to play around with uh, a lot of material. So okay. Let's get this fitted up the rest of the way and then we'll weld it up. Okay, so we're ready for some uh, some tacking here. Um, we got this fitting pretty good. And we're going to do a corner to corner here. That leaves a little bit of room for uh, some filler rod in there that we can sand off to make it look like a nice uh, formed corner. So let's do a little tacking and let's get it uh, get it set up here. Place where it wants to be tagged, which is 
right about there. Now it's kind of secure and I can move it around, but I'm going to get a couple more, a couple more tacks along this straight section. it up real tight like that um, you know the arc will actually make it fuse together so it's very simple to tack uh, when you have good fit up so okay so now we'll, I'm gonna work my way along this curve here and uh, we'll get it uh, get it squared away so I'm gonna push it together a little bit and I'm looking for the, the spot that wants to be tacked No filler rod. I'll go back and add some filler rod to it later. See now you can you can pull it around. You can move it around with your hand to get it to, to fit the way you want. So I think the next spot is. and repeat my way around and see I can pull it out a little bit to get it to fit the way I want and I'll just work my way around and you see it's a little long but we'll be able to trim that later so let me get it tacked up and then uh, we will uh, do some welding file that and then we'll do a little test fit. Alright, let's do a test fit here. And uh, so this is one of those, uh, there's a great line in uh, Pulp Fiction, I think it is, Harvey Keitel uh, is Mr. Wolf and uh, they're all happy uh, that he's come to help him out and uh, he says, hey, before we start congratulating each other and blankety blank, um, let's get this job done. But before I weld it, I want to uh, want to do a check fit on it make sure that uh, uh, it actually does what it's supposed to do okay. and it meets up flush in the back here all right and it fits kind of snug which is what what I want that's kind of in the middle there that looks pretty good um, let's see where's the, here's the draw bar the draw bar comes up to here so this will be projecting out the back which is not a particularly dangerous uh, article there, but uh, um, I don't think you want to stick your ear on it. Okay, and then um, so here's you see some of the the cutouts that uh, are needed uh, for this silly the silly axis here. All right. Okay, so we're gonna weld that up now, and it'll probably distort a little bit, so we might have a little bit of hand massaging to do, uh, and then I want to. Put a little drop of weld on that, and then we'll do uh, some detail work on that, and uh, and then move on to the uh, the other side. So let's go weld that. this little uh, this little corner here you see that goes to a really fine edge right there 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a little backing bar under there so I don't blow that corner away. So let me grab, it's gonna be a piece of copper probably and uh, I'll back that up with some copper. But let me go get a piece and get that set up and we'll do that last little bit there. Okay, so there's our little corner. I got it backed up with some copper. I'm gonna try to run up to that corner as close as I dare and uh, see how it comes out. That's not too bad. I lost the, the tiny little point, but that's pretty good. That'll be fine. Well, that's all it gets. Let's, let's, let's put it a different way. That's all it's going to get. So uh, and now I'm going to uh, weld up these little dots here and uh, do a little sanding on this thing. This is one of these uh, uh, Nicholson super shears here. It works really good on uh, kind of soft stuff. I'm just knocking most of the most of the meat off here. And I'll come back and uh, hit it with some Scotch Brite or something. Let me finish this up and uh, we'll uh, put, a, put a finish on this thing and move on to the next piece. All right, well, here's an interesting thing here. So you see these little divots in there. You can probably see them if, when I tip it and the light hits it right. Uh, there's three divots in there where I did these three little welds to plug those. <coughs> center punch marks. So what I want to do is, so what's happened is they've shrunken and they've, they've dove in a little bit, right? So there's a projection on this side. I want to poke it out a little bit so that I don't have to gouge away so much material here. So I want to pop that up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it on top of a little washer here and um, carefully try to get centered up and nice and flat tap them down a little bit so that the, this side's flat again. Um, let's see if I can, I don't know if I can do this. Uh, oh yeah, I can do it like this here. Okay, this will work. Now you gotta uh, do an eyeball centric there and hold it nice and flat. It doesn't take much. So what I wanna do is knock that down so I don't feel it anymore on this side which means it's up on the other side and I can sand it off and I'm not digging down to go after it, if that makes any sense, I hope. So what you don't want is gouges that uh, uh, reflect light. In a funny way, uh, um, you know, when you have a finish on this, so. Okay, so I think we're ready for a little scotch bright. Uh, knock those down and uh, get this buffed up. Your hand is a real good guide. You can feel bumpies and lumpies and stuff like that. 
So now we'll just give it a jitterbug and uh, and uh, we'll, that's the finish that'll be on it. Okay, so that's the, uh, the first half. Um, the other half is very similar. Um, I probably, I, I don't know, the other half is uh, basically kind of the same as this, but uh, I'll show the completed thing. I may not show the other half of the, of the guard because it's very similar to this. Um, we're gonna add a couple of mounting screws here to hold it on. Probably uh, one, one here and at least one there, maybe two, I don't know, we'll see. See how I feel <laughs> when I'm drilling and tapping. Um, I left it a little long at this end here so that I can trim it to meet up with the other guard real nicely. And um, uh, so I make a nice, uh, nice smooth transition there. So um, I don't know. These came out okay. They look all right. Uh, you know, it's a, you get good at fixing uh, boo-boos. So you can all hear Bozo the Bird over there, right? He flew in from Florida, so uh, we're trying to get him to fly south for the, uh, <laughs> the summer. So uh, anyway, um, thanks for watching.